Welcome back to this video tutorial series. In this tutorial, my main focus will be how do we get this finished Lego plane into Blender and from Blender into Plane Maker. The step from Plane Maker to X Plane might be a little bit of a more long winded thing because we have to build the entire plane's aerodynamics in Plane Maker. So for now, let's just focus on getting the plane into Blender, getting ourselves set up and comfortable, exporting that object and opening it up in Plane Maker. So, first thing we'll do is we'll open up Blender. And instead of starting with a template that I'm used to and that I like, I'm just going to reset Blender to its default factory settings just so that we all start off on the same page. I'm going to go ahead and delete the camera, the cube, and the light. What I have to do now since we've reset Blender is I'm going to have to re-enable those plugins that I installed. So we go to Preferences and we go to X-Plane and we enable that. And then the other thing we want to search for is LDraw and we enable that. And now the next thing we want to do is save this Blender file. So for that I'm going to go into my X-Plane 11 demo folder Inside the aircraft folder, I'm going to create a new folder called Tutorials. Inside that folder, I'm going to create a new folder and call it Lego Plane. Inside that folder, I'm going to create a new folder and call it Objects with a lowercase o. So inside that, I'm going to call this Blender file Solo Trainer, and the .blend extension will be added automatically as we save it. All right, with that saved, let's try to import the Solo Trainer. We go to LDraw and browse to the directory that we saved the plane in. Now before we click on import LDRAW models, let's take a look at some of these parameters here. The most important one is scale. I've found that a scale of 0.0125 will actually give you a grid lock with Blender's coordinate system such that when you use snapping, these LEGO bricks will actually snap into each other. I think most of the default settings for these are pretty good. And then this option right here might be on by default. It basically asks you if you want to put the model on the ground at the origin. Basically, that would elevate the imported file to be on ground level with the tires touching the XY axis. I'll leave that off because I actually want the coordinate system center to coincide with the center of the plane. Once we've got all of this set, we just go import LDRAW models. It gives me a couple of warnings here. This is probably due to the transparent materials that we used when we created the plane. Now, what I was talking about earlier is the snapping. If you look at the plane in side view in orthographic and you grab one of these blocks, Notice how the blocks line up with the background grid. If I duplicate this block and snap it upwards, it'll snap into place as though you're playing with Legos in real life. So that's why I chose the import size setting of 0.0125. But let's see what we need to do to get this plane exported. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And let's take a look at this pane right here. Blender 2.8 now works with collections and collections pretty much replace what we used to know as layers. And you can name collections and you can embed collections. You can create as many collections as you want. It's really quite neat. And the exporter does actually look at these collections to figure out what to export. So you'll see here in scene properties, we have the explain menu that allows us to export the objects. And here we already see collection. If I would want to rename this collection, let's say I want to call it EXT1. Then you see that that collection also changes here. Now, if I want to enable this as an export, I go exportable collection, and that'll cause the export script to pick this up and create an OBJ file out of it. If we open up this triangle, we're met with a whole bunch of options. We can leave the namespace blank because it'll just take the name from the collection. The textures, we're going to turn off auto detect textures, but we're going to leave these blank for now. We're going to fill those in later. We're going to turn off debug this object because we don't really need debugging right now. It just clutters up the OBJ file. And we're going to turn on optimize. Basically, what optimize does is it goes through and senses every time there's two vertices that share the same space and pretty much merges those before exporting. It can reduce the file size by a whole lot. But this option used to really slow down the export time, so I usually worked without it on. But now this version of Explain to Blender really optimized this feature, so it can generally stay on. So let's go ahead and see what happens if we hit Export OBJ. This button turns blue, and after a while, it pops out again. If we now go to the folder that we created for this plane, we see that there is a solo trainer.blend file here, and there's an ext01.obj file. Now let's open this one up. I'm going to use Notepad. And what we're looking at here is a text rendition of this OBJ file that got exported. This is what's called the header. It gives us information on the version of the OBJ file, the amount of points, and each of these lines is the coordinates of a vertex basically determining the shape of the entire object. You can imagine this is a big file now because of all the vertices that are being used in Blender. When you get to the bottom, you might find some attributes here. We're going to talk about these later. 
and you find a footer that basically tells you which version of Blender was used to export this and which version of Explain to Blender was used to export this. So if you were to enable the debug here, then that file would be a whole lot bigger. And if you were to disable optimize, that file would also be a whole lot bigger, filled with basically stuff you probably wouldn't need on a daily basis. So now that we've exported that plane, let's see what happens when we try to import it into Plane Maker. So I have a new blank file here in Plane Maker. Let's go ahead and save as, browse to my Tutorials and Lego Plane folder, and I'm going to call it legoplane.acf. So it's going to give us this warning, basically telling us that VNE, the maximum speed of this plane, is set to zero, which means that it won't even load in X-Plane. But this is our empty canvas to start working on the plane. Now let's try and import that object. We go to Standard and Miscellaneous Objects, and here we want to add. And to load it, we click on this little cube, and we see that file showing up in the subfolder Objects. We click on that, we go to Open Object, and there we go. We have a gray version of the LEGO plane inside Plane Maker. So in case you're wondering why it's gray, in the past, X-Plane supported object colors, and it used to be an attribute that got exported to the OBJ file, but that got discontinued with X-Plane version 11. So now what we're going to have to do is we are going to have to texture all of these colors because otherwise it'll just be gray. But that's something for a future tutorial. So that's it. That's the basics of getting a Lego plane into Blender and then into Plane Maker. Now for the next few tutorials, we'll go back and fill in some details and information on techniques and best practices that'll help us get the plane all the way over to X-Plane with full color and full animation. I hope you'll come back for those future tutorials, and I also hope that you join us at the xplane.org forums where we'll be providing support and downloads and where we would like to keep the conversation going. See you around.